This episode of Basics with Babish is sponsored by Marvel Strike Force, a squad-based strategic role-playing game available now on iOS and Android. Assemble your Marvel Dream Team for combat against sinister forces. You can choose between characters like Spider-Man, Thor, Black Widow, and Deadpool, a character known for his predilection for the subject of today's show, Chimichangas. And Deadpool clearly wants revenge against Ultimus for destroying his favorite Chimichanga restaurant. Download Marvel Strike Force now, and then let's get down to basics. All right, so at the root of most chimichanga fillings is taco seasoning, which is just fine, but something that can optionally be improved upon. But first we have to ask, what exactly is taco seasoning? Well, usually it's a large amount of chili powder and slightly smaller amounts of garlic powder, onion powder, red chili flakes, oregano, paprika, ground cumin, and salt and pepper. Now, like I said before, these seasonings are perfectly fine, but by replacing just a few of these elements with either their fresh or whole counterparts, we can greatly improve flavor. We've got some whole dried ancho chilies, fresh garlic, a fresh onion, some dried hot chilies for the bold, and whole cumin. Now, unlike taco seasoning, we can't just throw all this stuff in with our meat and call it a day. It's going to take a little bit of prep, starting with the cumin, which we're going to dry roast until fragrant and grind fresh. This alone is going to make a marked improvement, but we're also going to briefly toast our chilies in the same pan. Medium heat, one to two minutes until fragrant but not smoking. Then we're going to kill the heat and cover the chilies with water. Lit up the pan and let these guys sit for about 10 minutes minutes until they're completely soft. Then we're going to carefully dump both the chilies and their soaking liquid into a high-powered blender along with half a small onion cut in half. I'm going to add a couple canned tomatoes for a distinct tomato flavor. Then we're going to add three or four medium cloves of crushed and peeled garlic, about a half teaspoon each of paprika and dried oregano, maybe two teaspoons worth of our freshly ground cumin, optionally one chipotle from a can for some extra heat and smokiness, and a sprinkle of kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. Go ahead and blitz this together on high speed until it is completely smooth. We don't want no chunks of dried pepper getting caught in our teeth. Then, as with all things, we're gonna taste for seasoning. And as you might be able to tell, I'm kinda improvising this sauce and it turned out pretty hot. So I'm gonna add a couple more tomatoes to help balance things out, but you can make this sauce pretty spicy as it's gonna get layered underneath a whole bunch of other flavors. Now that our sauce is prepared, it's time to contend with our protein of choice. I'm going with chicken thighs, boneless, skinless chicken thighs that I've hit with salt and pepper, patted dry, and I'm now going to sear over medium-high heat in about two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Once they've got some nice color on both sides, I'm going to add maybe a cup and a half of our sauce, which is going to become this chicken's braising liquid. So I'm going to pop the lid on top of my saute pan, lower the heat, and braise for about a half an hour, during which time I'm going to prepare our chimichanga accompaniments. First up, a simple food processor salsa. I'm combining a 28-ounce can of plum tomatoes drained and de-seeded with half a chopped jalapeno, half a small quartered onion, one chopped clove of garlic, and a few leaves of... <clears throat> cilantro, a little sprinkle of kosher salt, freshly ground pepper, and a squeeze of lime juice. Then with the food processor, we're just going to use quick, short pulses to chop everything together, scraping down the sides of the bowl and making sure that everybody is chopped down to your desired consistency. Cover and fridge this until we're ready to use it, because next up we're making an approximation of Honduran crema, which is made simply enough by combining about half a cup of sour cream with the juice of half of a lime. Tiny whisk until homogenous, tangy, and drizzleable. I'm going to pour this carefully into my tiny squeeze bottle so I can make some tiny decorative patterns later on. Tabletop drizzle test successful. Last up, a simple guacamole. Into a small bowl goes the flesh of one large ripe Haas avocado, to which we're going to add the juice of half a lime, not only to flavor it, but to prevent it from turning brown. We're also going to add one small clove of crushed garlic, about a quarter of one small red onion finely minced, maybe a teaspoon of our freshly toasted and ground cumin, an optional finely minced jalapeno pepper for a little bit of heat, a few twists of freshly ground black pepper, and a sprinkle of kosher salt. Go ahead and mash that together using your mashing weapon of choice until the consistency of your choice is reached. Perform the all-important tortilla chip taste test to make sure that everything is seasoned properly. How's that guacamole, Babish? Nice. Back over on the stovetop, our chicken has braised for about 30 minutes, so I'm going to take off the lid and let the sauce cook down until nice and thick. Then you could chop up the chicken, but I'm going to shred it right in the pan, so I can then toss it with the sauce and set it aside to cool, because now I've got to take the most optional step of the day, making tortillas from scratch, because I couldn't find any at the store. So into our trusty food processor goes 300 grams of all-purpose flour, which we're going to top with about 50 grams of room temperature shortening that we're going to cut into small 
small pieces. Then we're just gonna pulse that together about 15 to 20 times in the food processor until it forms a mixture reminiscent of wet sand. Then with the food processor running, we are going to pour 200 milliliters of warm tap water in through the feed tube, letting the machine continue to run until a ball of dough forms. As soon as it comes together, we're gonna stop the processing, retrieve our warm, pliable, slightly sticky ball of dough, knead it for a couple seconds, both because it feels good and to make sure that everything is evenly incorporated, and then we're gonna weigh the dough so we can precisely divide it into six evenly sized balls. Which once we've got those divided out, we're going to roll taut and place on an oiled rimmed baking sheet, dotting the balls with oil themselves to make sure that they don't stick to a loosely wrapped layer of plastic wrap while we let them rest at room temperature for one hour. Then one at a time, we are retrieving our balls, dusting them generously on both sides with all purpose flour and rolling them out, making sure to also dust our rolling pin with flour, otherwise they'll stick. And the idea here is to get them as thin and round as possible. Normally we divide this amount of dough into eight pieces, but I want burrito sized tortillas here, which once rolled out, we're gonna cook on a bare cast iron skillet heated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, or until you see little wisps of smoke coming off of its surface. Plop the dough on top and let it sit undisturbed for about 90 seconds. Maybe longer, maybe shorter, depending on how hot your skillet is, but you wanna see nice big bubbles like this, and upon flipping, beautiful burnished brown spots like that. Another 30 to 60 seconds on that side, and then we're stacking the tortillas wrapped in a clean dish towel. This is going to help keep the tortillas warm, soft, and pliable until we're ready to use them, which we are right now, because it's time to start assembling chimichangas. Onto the lower third of a tortilla goes some of our chicken, some refried beans, and a healthy helping of cheese. From this point, we're rolling the way that we normally would roll a burrito with one extra step. To your left, my right, you will see a slurry made from one tablespoon of flour to three tablespoons of water, which I'm a brush on the outside edges of the tortilla. This is going to act like a glue that will hold our little burrito together as it enters the deep fry. There are a few things more disappointing in this life than a burst chimichanga. Over on the stovetop, we're getting ready to fry. I've got a quart of vegetable oil that I'm bringing to 350 degrees Fahrenheit before dropping in the changas. I'm just gonna let those fry for about two minutes or until deeply golden brown before flipping and frying for an additional one to two minutes. I'm sorry, did you think that we were doing healthy whole wheat oven baked chimichangas? No. Take them out and keep them warm on a wire rack set in a rim baking sheet until ready to serve. I'm going to start with a generous drizzle of crema, a generous dollop of guacamole, and a slightly less generous dollop of salsa. And there you have it, my ultimate chimichanga. I'm honestly not sure how authentic this recipe is to Tex or Mex cuisine. All I do know is that its cross-section does not do it justice, and that it is a crunchy, juicy, cheesy, spicy, zesty piece of deep-fried heaven. Not only did it enter the Clean Plate Club, as viewers have pointed it out to me, I tend to shake my food when I really, really, really like it. So let's see. Yep, there it is. The Babish food shake of approval. I just wish Wade Wilson himself were here to try these chimichangas. Actually, maybe I don't. He'd probably make fun of me or accidentally stab me or something. A much safer way to play with Deadpool is with the help of today's sponsor, Marvel Strike Force, a squad-based strategic role-playing game available now on iOS and Android. In the game, you get to assemble a five-member squad of Marvel superheroes and supervillains to defend the Earth from world-ending threats like Ultimus and his Kree Armada. You can recruit your own mini-Avenger dream teams and battle your way through campaigns, fight other players' teams for a place on the global leaderboard, or join up with an alliance to take on challenging group raids and go to war with rival alliances, all while powering up your teams and collecting more of your favorite Marvel heroes and villains along the way. Once I unlocked the area, the game really started to get fun. I was able to use the skills I learned getting started to battle it out with other alliances and set alternate teams for blitzes and raids for additional resources, all leading to getting more power Power to unlock more amazing characters. Download Marvel Strike Force today on iOS or Android and assemble your Marvel Dream Team. And thank you again to Marvel Strike Force for sponsoring today's episode.